Hello. Good evening. How are you? All right. How are you? The man with nothing to say this week. Yeah, it's all quiet on the Western Front. Yes. <laughs> how are things? By the way, how's the how's the weather up in Madrid? It's still Beautiful. very warm, is it? What's the temperature like? Twenty-five, I think. Yeah, it's about the same here. It's amazing, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> uh, well, it's twentieth of October. <laughs> yeah. Well, your your weather down there is going to last a little bit longer than it is here. Yeah. Although we've not had a bad storm yet. I, I would normally expect us to have some kind of a, you know, a three or four day deluge, if you like, okay. strong mm-hmm. winds, sort of late September going into October time. But as yet, no, nothing. All right, good. Now, Nick, you want to address a few comments? Yes, I thought, well, it's a good time. I just have one quick little update, by the way, uh, that may be of interest to people who've been following the the property story. So today's Wednesday, as per normal, when we do these little chats of ours. Um, I spoke to the the bank manager at Caja Rural today. Uh, So I'm going on Friday morning to sign the final paperwork. All right, so good. that's it. Job done then. Uh, be, next stop, be, notary be, office on the 26th of November. So you're almost the homeowner. Yeah, oh, almost, yeah. I'm mm. sure there'll be something, some other spanner in the works just to upset things. But, something will uh, yeah. pop up, something mm. will pop up, of course. All right, but, good. But yeah, I thought it'd be nice for us to have a little chat. You know, it's great that people make comments. I mean, okay, you've got the usual small group of people who just throw negative things um but actually there's yeah there's one guy jimmy bishu or something i've noticed on all three of the last videos he's been very quick off the starting block um praising you for not falling asleep right and uh (laughs) and declaring me as being mr boring but that's okay but the rest what's his name sorry jimmy Bishudo or something, Jimmy Bishu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, he also wants to know where the teddy bear's gone. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. You got him. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, great. So what we'll can have I a say at... to you, Jimmy? Yeah. 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 We'll have a look at a few comments here, then, mm. uh, Nick. We'll start with one from uh, episode four. Okay. okay from uh, Paul. Yeah. So Paul um, was going on. His comment was was you know very interesting. Um, talking about the fees that you pay to solicitors yep. on property purchases. Um, now, obviously, I had mentioned in one of our previous chats that um, uh, as it stood at the time, I was due to be paying 1% of the purchase price yep. as the fee to my lawyer that I've got involved um, to help me along. Uh-huh. Uh, so what Paul said was, this is too much in my humble opinion. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, uh, and he's mentioned figures of sort of 800 to 1,000 euros. He managed to, to get it for 800, yeah. um, and it should include the visit to the notary. Um, now, what I would say to that is this. A, um, I did do a lot of Google searching, and 1% does seem to be the standard. Okay. However, A... Um, this particular lawyer that I got involved, because he works for a legal practice where I have actually used one of the other lawyers, I have and an, have ended up getting a bit of a discount. Okay, um, so instead of it costing me what's sixteen hundred, um, it's only going to cost me about fourteen hundred. Okay. Um, I say only, you know, it's not a massive discount, but it's a discount nonetheless. Now, I think though that. In the future, I mean, look, A, I've never done this before. So I think in a situation like this, if you if you really don't know what you're doing, then clearly to make use of somebody who will take you through all of the stages, all of the steps, and, and make you aware of what you should look out for. For example, yeah. the no to simple issue we had, you know, all these, yeah, all yeah, these yeah. things. Um, I, 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 I think it's worth it. But going forward... I can certainly imagine if I get to the point, I don't know, 10 years time or something where I want to sell my property, maybe upgrade and buy something else, then, you know, would I need the full blown services of a lawyer at that point? In other words, I, I'd be far more aware of things. Well, you've got, um, the, would, you've would, got the experience. Yeah. You there, haven't you? Yeah. I think it's, I think it'd be much easier then to strike a, a deal with a lawyer. Um, so I, I sort of agree with Paul, 
for that reason. I think experience right. counts for a lot. Yeah. All right, good. So mm -hmm. uh, we're, uh, the comments are on the screen so people can read exactly what yeah, yeah. Paul said. But basically the gist is that you paid too much. 1% mm -hmm. was too much according to him and in his humble opinion around 800 to 1,000. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. good. All right, going through the comments, the next one from uh, Brian Tweed. Ah, yes. Well, he paid a nice comment, didn't he? Uh, basically, he was saying that, um, well, that I'm down to earth and I try to add, or I add humor okay. to, the, to yeah, the videos, yeah. which is I, part of my aim. Yeah. I agree. I mean, yeah, thank you. I mean, I mean, we're talking. Yeah, we've been talking about some serious stuff, but I do try to deliver it in, a, in an entertaining fashion. That's it. That's um, it. It's just part of my nature. I'm a theatrical type. I know some people some don't people like that. Some people have picked up on that, Nick. Yeah, I know. They have. Yeah, well, th you know, there's a very famous theater down here called the Salon Varieties. Okay. It's an international theater. And I have been involved in five, six different shows, um, including I created a show three years ago. Okay. It was like a tribute to the great comedy sketches of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, and it was a roaring success. And I love all that kind of thing. And I'm animated, therefore, in the way that I talk. Some people don't do like the it. Two Ronnies, the Nick Haters. Or... Yeah, we did do the two Ronnies. We did the famous um, Four Candles sketch, okay. amongst others. Sorry? And the Mastermind four sketch. Four Candles or Four Candles? Four, four ca yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've seen it, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, uh, everyone's seen it, yeah. I know, I know. They're, they're, they're just fantastic, those two. Just, the way, I mean, even the Mastermind sketch, I don't know if you ever saw it. It was Ronnie uh, Corbett sitting in the chair was giving the answer to the question before. Yeah. Oh, it was hilarious. Uh, just wonderful. And I did it in the theatre, by the way, with um, a spotlight focused on them, and them are, uh, uh, I was recording it live. Yeah. So it's a bit like watching darts. In other words, you could see them on the stage, but I also had a screen to the right, okay? So you could, you could watch the whole, the, the two things together. Yeah. Um, people love yeah. that the close up on the screen anyway coming back yeah. to Brian well just um, on, just on the topic mm -hmm. of British humor maybe uh, some of the American viewers are not familiar <laughs> with the two Ronnies or Morecambe and Wise or or those classic comedy shows of the 70s I think it was mainly the 1970s weren't they back then Nick because Ronnie Barker went on to do uh, a few other shows as well I think he did a prison show there porridge or something yeah it was called. Um, well with that in mind if you like um because yeah I, Look, I, I think British humour is fantastic. We play on words. We have sarcasm, which we're you know very famous for. Um, we also have dark humour as well thrown in. Um, I will throw in a little comment, and I'll just do a quick little list of some of the favourites that people can have a little look at. Monty Python, yep. Not the Nine O'Clock News, The Two Ronnies, Morecambe and Wise, etc. Fench and Saunders. There's a whole, there's a bunch. There's probably a list of about ten. And they should just have a look on YouTube. There's clips of all of them on there, and hopefully yeah. they will enjoy it. Yeah. Some of the great uh, comedy duos. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, just the way that they, they, they go backwards and forwards. I mean, Morecambe and Wise was classic. The way that yeah. they destroyed um, Andre Previn, I'll always remember that. I mean, this is a world-famous composer, and and it a fair play to him. He went on to that show not really having much idea what was going to happen to him. And Eric Morecambe was slapping him about the cheeks at one point and grabbing him like this. And, you know, come on, Mr. Preview, you know, get yourself organized type thing. Yeah. Just g brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, I love all, right, all that good. stuff. So still on Brian's uh, <clears throat> yeah. comment here, he said something about the community charges there at your <clears throat> new building, Nick. He said yeah, you know, maybe a bit too much as well. Well, now bearing in mind, if you remember from when we talked about um, – all the property viewings I was doing, mm -hmm. obviously community charges <clears throat> was one of the fundamental questions I was asking. Um, it was quite a range. I think the lowest was 60 a month. Okay. The highest, which I just thought, whoa, something like 250 because they were in the middle of doing some renovations and this 250 a month was set until 2023. I mean, those. that's a massive amount. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? That's like, what, 60 and 70-odd every three months. Yeah. yeah, just ridiculous. So, okay, mine's 115. Now, I think that's pretty average for down here on the Costa del Sol. But obviously, I can't comment on other places. Um, Brian has mentioned um, Alicante, 
Yeah. Okay, so he pays 120 every three months, so that's what 40 a month. Yeah. And that obviously seems to be pretty good. So I don't know if it's, so I'm going to say I think the average down here is probably 70 to 80 a month. Yeah. Right? And it might well be different in other areas. So maybe the Costa Blanca um, is quite different. Um, I yeah. think per region, there could you could, could have be, these variations. Could be a difference. Could be a I difference, mean, do you, do you yeah. pay a community fee where you are? No, 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 because we uh, we live in a house and uh, we're not part of a community per se. Okay, okay. Which, in my opinion, is the best option because of course, yeah. Uh, ex- the experience that I've had with communities in the past, Nick, is they can be quite conflictive places. Uh, which we're going to come on to. I think somebody's mentioned something about president being president, uh, which we're going to come well, on the, to. Yeah, the, the yeah. same guy, Brian, mentions it. Yeah, he says in a couple of months you'll be president of the community. Ah, that... yes, it, yes, it is part of his comment. Yes, now, okay, this is quite funny, really. It's interesting that he, he's mentioned this because, right, so I've been here 14 years. Yeah. Now, over the past couple of years, there have been a few people that have come to me saying, Nick, if, if, if you buy the place you're renting, we would like you to become president. And, and, and one of the primary reasons for that, why they're asking is, okay, fine, they like my personality, great. But they seem to imagine me as being the kind of person that, can br- that could bring the two sides together. Uh-huh, there yeah. is a definite them and us in, a, in, a, the, in, a, in the, an urbanization media. like this. Yeah, it's the Spanish on one half and then the international people on the other side, <laughs> right? Um, <Yeah>. And <laughs> now, obviously... Um, the president here traditionally has been Spanish, which is perfectly understandable. Um, the current president, unfortunately, doesn't speak any English, and I'm not going to criticise him for that. Why should he? I mean, he's, it's his country. <laughs> it's his country. It's a Spanish community. I mean, there's no reason he should speak English. But roughly half of the places here are owned by international people, yeah, okay. and it can be quite difficult having this this communication between everybody. Um, so. Yeah, the idea of me being president was obviously with my dual language, if you like, would uh, and personality would be a way of bringing people together. Yeah. Um, and the fact that I'm always based here because quite a lot of people, Spanish included, there's a lot of Spanish people here who live in Cordoba. Holiday home. Come, yeah, even the you know people the Cordobeses come here as a holiday home, and obviously plenty of people from the UK. Uh, Finland, Sweden, etc. We've also got holiday homes here. Yeah. So I think the I, you know, the, for them the idea of having somebody who's lived here a long time speaks both languages, clearly can communicate with people, um, could be good. But I've seen the president and what, and what he does here. It's a lot of work, Stuart. It's an awful lot of work, and, you, yeah. and he's having to deal with contractors. Yeah. You know, the, the people who need to come and fix the water machines and all the work that's had. You know, with COVID. Um, there's a whole bunch of new regulations um, that have come about as well um, in terms of s- separation areas and fencing and all kinds yeah, of different yeah. things. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's complicated itself. It yeah. is, yeah. I mean, okay, when I move to the, this new place next month, um, I hope to clearly meet you know as many people as I can there and make my, myself more than just a face. Um, but yeah, the idea, President Nick of the community. <laughs> not, uh, not for you. God no. help everybody if that happens. <laughs> All right, good. Now we'll move on, Nick. Uh, we'll yep. get, we'll go on to the next one. Here is uh, Wickler Walker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is on after episode five. So yeah, yeah he asked quite simply, how do we know each other? And uh, this, of course, goes all the way back to last year, doesn't it? Uh, when well, COVID I think you got in, in contact with – I'll tell the story quickly. I think mm. you got in contact with me sometime after COVID hit last year, maybe yeah. I think May, March, April, April May. I can't remember yeah. exactly when it was. I think you supported the channel and then you wrote mm. me an email and said, uh, <laughs> how about an interview? Or, or maybe I said to you, how about an interview? Not sure how it, how it, how it worked out back then, but – um, basically, that's it. We've never actually met in person, other than the the conversations that we've had here. We were going to catch up last year that's, when you came yeah, to Madrid August, because you were going I was on somewhere. My, Greece, yeah, I was on my way that's to right. Greece. On your way to Greece, but, but yeah, it was one of those times of the year when yeah. I'm not here. No. Mm. Mm. So yeah, it was, no, it was, it was it's good, and of course, something that people don't know about, and this would be 
what the hell are these guys on about? Something that you and I both love, of course, is cricket, right? And we've ch- chatted a bit about cricket. And, and by the way, I have to ask you now, obviously, the England team is going down under. Yeah, because all of their soon. demands have been met. Yeah, exactly. They can take their families with them in, and staying have them in their a, COVID bubbles, if you like. Absolutely. So, I mean, the only spanner in the works, I believe, is that, of course... All five test matches, as it stands, are in the, the usual places. Brisbane, the first. Then you've got, I think, Perth, Adelaide, followed by Sydney and Melbourne, right? Mm-hmm. Five different states. Now, each state apparently down there has got its own little yep. rules, etc. Yep. So that seems to be the only potential spanner in the works that a test match or two might have to be moved. Well, there's a certain uh, content. Well, there's part of the the contingent that are not really keen on having to quarantine every time they go to a new state, right? So, mm. for people out there that are not familiar with cricket in Australia, it's similar to how it's played in the UK. For example, mm. that you play one test at Lords, you play another at Edgebaston, you play another yeah. at the the Oval. It's a tradition, right? When it comes yep. to the Ashes, maybe. That the English will try and stick one in Wales to put us off guard, you know. But um, in Australia, we don't normally do that. No, it's always the the Wacker, the Gabba, yeah. the SCG, the MCG, and the Adelaide Oval. Maybe yeah. once every now and again, there's a test in Tasmania so that you guys, you know, feel familiar yeah. with the conditions down there, you know. Oh, here we go. Some Basically, that's the way coming. it works ah, because okay. when you get to Queensland or, or Western Australia, you, you, you're like a fish out of water, you know. Yeah, that's the way, yeah, the way yeah. it is. But anyway, we won't get too much into cricket because it's just around yeah. the corner and uh, I might cop yeah. some flack if Australia loses, so I won't go too much. Too but much. you're not going to lose because, uh, I mean – my prediction, unfortunately, I would love, of course, I would love England to win because uh, I love cricket. and, I, and I, <laughs> But I think we're going to get hammered. I think well, every, it's 4-1, everyone... 5-0. I'm actually, for once, I'm actually going to agree with your famous guy, Glenn McGrath. Um, I think we're going to get demolished. But <laughs> well, everyone, everyone would love England to win mm. except Australia and the rest of the world. <laughs> no, come on. There, there were... The world loves it. It's the most famous cricket battle in history, and they love it when we get one over on the Aussies. Yeah, but it's not going to happen. So, well, you never enjoy know. it. It's a, it's yeah. a, you never you never bet on a two horse race, Nick. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You never know. So uh, anyway, that's how we met. Cricket yeah. uh, aside, and it says uh, congratulations for buying the yeah. property. So congratulations. So a nice comment there from uh, Walker. Yeah. Next one, Dan Capone. 